As you may be aware, I've just returned from holiday and if you're thinking of going away soon, you might wonder what's the best way to store your electric car battery for going away on holiday or what's the best way to use your electric car day to day should you charge it to 100%? Well, rather than me answer these questions, I thought I'd speak to a good friend of mine, Dr. Ewan McTurk. Dr. Ewan McTurk is a battery chemist and one of the leading consultants in the UK industry for battery chemistry. So over to you, Ewan. Thanks, Nick. Let's start with an electrochemistry lesson here. The voltage of the individual lithium ion cells that make up your battery pack is the potential difference or the difference in potential between the positive electrode and the negative electrode. You can crudely think of the potentials of each of them as being like a voltage. Um, the difference between the positive electrode and the negative electrode gives you the cell voltage that you can measure and that the battery management system can measure. Why is that important? Because the way that the individual cells degrade depends on the potential of those electrodes and how various different degradation mechanisms might take place at those different potentials. So in a conventional lithium ion cell, uh, as found in most electric vehicles today, you'll probably have NMC, which is lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide as the positive electrode material. And now when the cell is approaching 100% state of charge, the potential of that positive electrode, that NMC electrode, starts to get quite high. Meanwhile, the anode, incidentally, the negative electrode potential is going very low, hence you get a big cell voltage. But with NMC, the potential goes so high that it crosses the threshold point at which the electrolyte, that conductive fluid that allows the lithium ions to transfer between the positive and negative electrode, that starts to degrade at a high cathode positive electrode potential. So if you were to leave your car you know, parked up at 100% state of charge for months on end, then you would start to see some degradation start to happen as the electrolyte starts to degrade against the positive electrode. So that's no good. In truth, if you're going away for like a week or two, then maybe leaving it at 100% isn't terrible uh, because over the overall lifespan of that vehicle, as long as it's something that's not being done regularly, leaving it at 100% for, for days or weeks on end, then it shouldn't be too bad. Bad. So from the, the question that Nick had about what if you're going away on holiday or something like that, then it's probably not too scary. But what I would do from a battery health freak perspective is I would aim to leave the car between 50 and 80% state of charge. And that just means that that positive electrode potential is that bit lower and it's hopefully going to be below the threshold at which that very slow degradation mechanism starts. What about day-to-day -day use? Well, if you don't need the full range of the car, um, then, you know, typically aim to run it between 80% to, uh, top end and 20% bottom end. And then, you know, just sort of charge and discharge in that kind of region. And that, again, will maximise the lifespan of the battery. There have been scientific studies where people have taken individual cells, stuck them into cell cyclers in the lab and cycled them between different states of charge, trying to see which one ends up getting the most cycles. The most cycles was between 50 and 80% state of charge. But what does that mean? It means that you've plugged it in the most amount of times. The one that had the most amount of energy put it through it was about 80% to 20%. And what does that mean? Most energy put through it, most miles driven. That's what matters to you. Now, things get a bit interesting with lithium iron phosphate, LFP. This is the new, well, actually, it's not that new, the revived cell chemistry, um, which has made big strides in energy density, which means we're starting to see it used in the standard range Tesla Model 3 and Model Y, standard range MG4, the BYD electric vehicles, your um, Maxxis electric vans, some of the entry level ones have it, and electric buses have been using them for ages. Um, the point with LFP is that its chemistry is so different. The positive electrode obviously gets rid of NMC, brings in LFP. LFP has a lower potential. And in fact, the potential is that much lower that it doesn't cross that threshold at which the electrolyte starts to degrade in the same way. So you can routinely charge a lithium iron phosphate cell to 100% and it shouldn't cause any issues. It should be a very long-lived cell because it doesn't undergo that same degradation mechanism that you'd find with NMC. And in fact, that's why you get the likes of Tesla saying with their standard range Model 3 and Y that um, you know you can routinely charge that to 100%, that's fine. But if you have an NMC or NCA, similar but different, equipped Tesla, which is the long-range ones and the older Teslas from 
pre-2020, 2021 kind of crossover point when they started switching to LFP, then Tesla says to you, if you keep routinely charging it to 100%, oh, I don't know, you might want to try and back that off a little bit. And in fairness, quite a lot of modern electric cars do let you set a charge limit to somewhere below 100%. So in my case, I had a 24 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf. I used it daily. I needed the full range. I charged it to 100%. That was fine. I was going to be using it the next day. I now have an older Tesla and I typically charge it to about 80%, but if I need the range, absolutely I charge it to 100%, especially if I'm gonna be driving it within a few hours of that charge completing. Final thing to point out with battery chemistry and the way that EVs treat them is that the battery management system of electric vehicles deliberately blocks off the top few millivolts for NMC cells so that they're never charged to their true 100% state of charge, and that helps to reduce the rate at which that electrolyte degradation happens and it gives them a nice long lifespan. So in comparison to a smartphone, if you were to routinely charge that to 100%, or a laptop if you were to routinely charge that to 100%, where they push the voltages as high as possible, all for the sake of a few minutes runtime at the expense of years of lifespan. An electric vehicle does it the opposite way around. They deliberately block off some of that capacity. You lose a handful of miles of range maximum as a result of that, but you gain years of useful operation. So they'd be daft not to do it. And as I said with LFP, the maximum voltage on the cells spec sheet is what you would get in the electric vehicle because that same degradation mechanism isn't an issue. So hopefully that's uh, helped to uh, answer that question a bit. As I say, the occasional leaving it for 100% for a few days isn't too bad. Um, ideally, you know, use it up to kind of 80% state of charge with the occasional charge and balance to 100%. The battery management system likes to keep tabs of how much capacity it's got left, so the occasional full charge helps in that regard. But if you're going away on holiday, I would recommend between 50 and 80% state of charge to leave it when it's parked up for a long time. But if it's something that's going to be sorned, if it's going to be kept off the road or something, absolutely aim for 50 to 80. Don't leave it at 100. That's how you'll very slowly kill a, an NMC battery. And if it's LFP, charge it to 100% as much as you want, really. And then if we want to be really techy about this as well, avoid shallow cycling. So that's when you charge it to 100% all of the time, but then only drive it a few miles down the shops and back. So you're just constantly cycling it between 80 and 100%. You're keeping, in the case of an NMC cell, this is, you are keeping that potential so high that you are basically just, you know, forcing that degradation mechanism to keep going and keep going and keep going. We've seen that particularly with 30 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf. It did not like being force fed to 100%, driven down the shops and back, force fed to 100%. That really did kill those batteries. Everything else seems to be coping much more um, resiliently in real life because EV batteries and battery management systems are much tougher than people think they might be. But again, from a battery health freak perspective, follow the advice I've given and you should be fine. Um, if you want to learn any more about sort of battery electrochemistry and so on, uh, I of course do have my own channel, uh, Plug Live Television. I've been that busy recently, there haven't been any new episodes since, oh god, beginning of the year. But um, thank you Nick for doing all the editing, which meant I just needed to set up the camera and do a few minutes of, of chatting to you. So uh, hence coming on today, I've let Nick do all the hard work. And finally, I would like to dedicate this little snippet to the late Professor John Goodenough, who is the pioneer of the lithium ion battery, uh, and then decided that wasn't good enough and he came back and invented LFP, uh, and then started working on solid state batteries and kept working and winning the Nobel Prize right on until he was over 100 years old and he's, he's just passed away recently. So without him, we wouldn't have the EVs that we have today. We also wouldn't have the smartphone that this is being recorded on, the laptop that it will be edited on. A very sore loss for the battery world. He will be very sorely missed.